I guess someone might wonder, well, why, why are you highlighting the gospel or the person of Jesus as anything in particularly special? Like after all said and done with all this messiness and I've had all these questions about theology and faith, why, why not just be an agnostic? Just, well, I don't know. Maybe God exists and I hope, and I hope there's a eternal Mm -hmm. place where everything I love will exist forever or something like that. But why, why follow right. Jesus? Why, what's so compelling about this figure? Um, I think it's, it's. Well, I mean, I, I could answer that on several different kind of levels. One is just the fact that this is the context in which I was raised, and this is the story that I know. And it's my story, and it's, for me, an existentially, experientially um, compelling story even if I have a thousand questions about it, like, you know, the walking on the water and the feeding of the 5,000 thing we were talking about before. Mm-hmm. Right. So I think that's part of a thing uh, that that's part of it, but it, it gives me an orientation to look at the world in a positive way and in a way that's not driven by fear. So that's just that a lot of the gospel interpretations are more driven by fear than by just openness and faith. So what do you mean by I that? I think what, that's one thing. What's the typical, what's the fear-based interpretation? What do you mean by that? Well, the fear is that if you're wrong, you go to hell. Or if sure. you don't believe the right okay. way, you go to hell. I think I think it comes down to the afterlife. That's mm-hmm. that's it. And um, so, and I think that, um, you know, what, what what makes the, okay, all religions are unique. All religions have distinctive marks. And I think, you know, many Christians that I've listened to over the years are very open to those marks of other religions where the Christian system has not always gotten things right. So that's one thing, I'm, to be in conversation with other religions, especially Judaism, you know, because it's so close to, to Christianity. Um, but one thing that I find just uh, attractive because it's paradoxical <laughs> about the gospel is this idea of suffering now um and not just suffering but humiliation and the idea of a a religion in the first century that began with its founder being humiliated on a Roman cross yeah. And that God takes, and that God associates, the God of Israel associates with this figure. That's the New Testament faith. That's what they write about. But this has nothing to do with history. I don't know whether those things are real, whether they have it, but this, the testimony of the New Testament writers is like, this is our beginning. That makes absolutely no sense in the first century. It really doesn't. And it makes no sense in Judaism because God is not one who voluntarily associates with shame and humiliation. Mm-hmm. But God is glorified. God is to be honored. If you shame God in the Old Testament, that's largely what 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 the Israelites do for large portions of the Old Testament, in the in the narratives anyway. They God feels shame, and He has to correct that by punishing, mm. and by putting Himself back in the honor position rather than the shame position. The poor bloke the who New dropped Testament, the Ark of the think, Covenant. Oh yeah, you don't no, drop, seriously. Don't drop yeah. the Ark. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Or so him. many things. It's like, you calm down. It's not that big of a deal, you know? But it's, it, again, it's it's the honor and shame dynamic that I find reversed with a vengeance, if I can use that word. Um, it's, it's reversed in the New Testament in ways that are paradoxical, where Paul calls himself a slave of Jesus Christ, right? So that's, that's, a, that's a self-humiliating thing, to die to self, to... Um, uh, to think of others more highly than yourself, to uh, uh, and and just again the idea of the founding of the faith rooted in a humiliating death, but he was raised from the dead. Okay, but still, how this began is like a non-starter. Mm-hmm. It is what does Paul say in Corinthians? It's it's um, uh, it's 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 scandalous to the Greeks and to the Jews. It's an offense, right? Yeah. It's like an offense to one. It's just a stumbling block for one, and like a foolishness to the Greeks, stumbling block to the Jews, something like Thank that. Thank you, yeah. Yeah. foolishness to the Greeks, and it is foolishness to the Greeks, and a stumbling block, the, and it is. And I used to think, boy, why don't they get their acts together? No, they're right. <laughs> they're absolutely right. This is foolishness and a stumbling block. And you know, this is why Paul in Romans has to very early on, like in verse sixteen of the first chapter, I think it's sixteen. 
He says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God for salvation. Well, why would he be ashamed? Because of how it started. It, yeah. But he turns, he he flips the table. It's it's in the shame that the power of God is shown. That is like I okay, this is not my lead if I'm making up a religion, right? <laughs> yeah. And I find that to be very, very intriguing and paradoxical. And that then ties to the notion of uh suffering and the this and again I don't say this lightly. This is like you know, I don't have the right to speak a lot about a topic like this, but um, the, the the idea of how our suffering is something that actually draws us into the presence of God, not away from the presence of God. And I find those to be really, you know, beautifully reorienting away from self-promotion, right, the shame-honor thing, and then not thinking that there's something wrong with you when you're suffering. Yeah. yeah. Which, which is a notion that Job's friends had, you know, in the Old Testament. Job didn't, but Job's friends did. So, um, yeah, I, I think that's what I would say, but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't come at it in the conventional way that, well, you're going to hell, you need a savior. Because, I mean, I think I don't, I don't see that in the New Testament either. Mm-hmm. So right. I don't see that as this is how they go about explaining the reality of Jesus. So here, yeah. th- sorry if this is complicated, but I have a follow up here. So we were saying, okay, instead of explaining inspiration with the top down method, like of course the authors of Genesis one, let's say, incorporated these details. A lot of other cultures had similar things, or maybe, um, right, the gods. Uh, command i forget which book maybe joshua of wiping out the amalekites or something uh i don't need to work in to my theology that god wants me to kill infants rather like of course he thought god told him to do that all the mm-hmm. other cultures had violence now here though in the new testament this seems to be uh, an exception to that idea that because you led off with uh this is this is weird for first century palestine it's not of course yeah. that people would uh, attribute this uh, humiliation to the founder of their religion or to God himself. Mm-hmm. Right. So that, can you just speak to mm-hmm. that? Is that what we're saying? Like that's what makes it compelling or Christianity rather or Jesus that it's unique well, it, it, in that it's way. What makes it, it makes it compelling to me. It makes it intriguing to me, the notion, right? Mm-hmm. The, the thing is that again, all, all religions have distinctive markers. I shouldn't say unique, that's maybe too much, but all religions have distinctive markers. There are things about Christianity that are paralleled in other religions. There are things about what Jesus says and does that are paralleled in other religions, one of which is a miraculous birth, and one of which is rising from the dead. Mm-hmm. These are not unique in the ancient world, right? So I'm looking for things that, what is it that makes Jesus and the gospel stand out? And it's it it's the willing willingly entering into a state of shame and humiliation. Yeah, it's so unexpected. <laughs> it is. And I'm not saying that's not proof that Christianity is true. That's not any, I'm not saying anything like that. Okay. But to me, it's like, hmm, that's compelling. And I've asked people, are there other religions that have done something like that in the past? And um, I haven't yet gotten an answer uh, th- that in the affirmative to that. I mean, there might be, but if it's that hard to find, <laughs> right. maybe it's a minority voice anyway, you know, but, but this is, you know, the, the, the symbol of, of Christianity is a cross for heaven's sake. You know, that's, that is not an empty tomb. It's a cross. And um, there is much more to that than, well, this is going to get me to trouble. No, yeah, whatever. I'll, I'll never see you guys again. What do I care? Um, <laughs> I think there's much more to the cross than simply God needs somebody to shed blood oh, sure. to cover over everybody's problems, right? Yeah, so that won't get you in um, trouble with us. <laughs> now with you guys, I'm thinking like I know people are listening yeah. and they might not have ever heard this stuff before, and yeah. I, I'm very sensitive to that. But but I think that the the blood centered um, sacrificial atoning element of the cross. In my opinion, where I stand now, owes an awful lot to the fact that that's the only Jewish vocabulary that the New Testament writers had 
for describing something that was so utterly bizarre and unexpected. And mm-hmm. just this is not the way the almighty, sovereign, glorified creator of the cosmos shows up. This is not how it's supposed to happen. Mm-hmm. And so I think they had to do what they had to do, which is interpret it in ways that are culturally and, and contextually meaningful, mm. which I take very seriously as a scholar. But I don't know if the, that's the only thing. And the history of the church will support that because there are at least five or six atonement theories, how the cross works. And they don't all emphasize the, necess- the necess- necessity of shedding blood yeah. uh, like a sacrificial lamb. Yeah. Hmm. Can I ask, you, you mentioned, this is backtracking a little bit. 